What's going on, everyone? I think we're going to call this wrestling stuff. Because wrestling's supposed to be fun, lighthearted, and we want to hit on the more just enjoyable stuff going on. The sillier, crazier things going on in the wrestling world, whether you see it on um, X weekly WWE and AEW shows or anything else that might be floating out there. It's about just having fun, having some silly stuff, and we want to just be able to tell you about it. Can't really quite show as much, but being able to explain things out, explain the sillier stuff going on, Botchamania-ish, without the videos as much, I guess. So, let's roll. Oh, and I should probably explain to you too that uh, my name is Rob. I used to write and edit for Daily DDT, a wrestling website about six years ago. I did that for three years, and now I'm a uh, writer for Wrestling Junkie at USA Today Sports. So, uh, the name that we I feel like we hear the most on AEW is Adam. 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 Adam! Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've seen plenty of Adam, Adam Cole, uh, Adam Copeland. Yeah, I think that's uh, the next one we're going to be seeing pretty prominently now, as of last night at WrestleDream, because look at that. Edge, or excuse me, Adam Copeland is here, if you saw the um, Tony Khan and NJF press scrum after the show ended, where Tony Khan got a little, got a little pissed off when MJF said the WWE name. Yeah, we're going to be hearing a lot of Adam, and that was, whew, that crowd pop when that, that music hit, which is a very, very slightly altered version of his WWE music at the very beginning. Um, otherwise, it's the same thing. R, rated R Superstar, all that's here. On this day, I see clearly, and seeing that, or hearing that in not a WWE environment is, I mean, I never would have expected that, expect that to happen a couple months ago. But then hearing it now is just, whew, it's, it's unbelievable, man. Goosebumps, chilling, and for the people sitting in that arena there, that's unbelievable. The only thing missing now is just for Roderick Strong to come in on the first segment that uh, Copeland has on Dynamite on Wednesday. I mean, there's no other way of going about this. You gotta have him come out and scream at him, especially when Adam Cole's now out for an, with an injury. You gotta have that. At some point, I mean, it should be the funniest, funniest thing possible. Um, yeah, you know, have yourself a day, Mr. Copeland. Have yourself a week. Have yourself a, a run with AEW because this is going to be freaking fun. And he just looks freer out there. He looks freer. Looks like he's enjoying himself. And that's what he also implied in his tweets that he put up um, thanking WWE for his time there. But also just that it's a... It's a um, partnership that ran its course over the past couple of years when they didn't bring him in for much to do, which apparently, according to the press scrum from last night, is more about WWE's side rather than his because he's ready to wrestle full-time and they didn't have anything for him to do. So I'm really excited to see what we get out of this. I guess we'll, I guess we'll jump right into Cole. So uh, Adam Cole, yeah, that injury is not a work. <laughs> That's just a real-life kind of unfortunate thing because I was at the Dynamite Grand Slam and when he jumped off that ramp, he limped from the moment he stood up to the moment he walked backstage after the show ended after the TV cameras went off. That's real. That's real. And Britt Baker posted enough to prove that, that it's real. Yeah, and I mean, when Cole came in on Dynamite, I mean, also proof. People are saying that he's faking it for storyline because we got, of course, Jay White getting the crap beaten out of him by four masked men. Yeah, I don't think that was Cole. I do think it could be Britt Baker, possibly. There was actually a time where I thought it was gonna be Cole behind the mask. I gave it some thought because it's a devil mask that we saw in the locker room a couple weeks ago on, on uh, AEW, but that's just too obvious. That's way too obvious. And um, yeah, I'm gonna say it could be Britt Baker. Maybe it's going to be returning Danhausen, maybe. But maybe it could be Britt Baker recruiting all those goons from the from the kingdom to help out. Maybe it's Maria Kanellis helping out there too. Possibly. A lot of different options. As long as they don't make this as bad as Retribution and as, they, as long as they don't extend this out until, I'd say, 2024, I think this should be okay. But I mean, as long as we just get to hear Adam again. Maybe, 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 uh... Adam! Maybe Roddy will scream that out at some point again to maybe think it was Cole and Cole doesn't come out. And maybe it's maybe we get the other way around. Maybe it's when Copeland comes out. 
Recently, Becky Lynch had an interview with Chris Van Vliet on Insight where she said that her NXT debut was worse than Shockmasters. If you look back with Becky Lynch's NXT debut, it happened in 2014, nine years ago. Nine years ago, look how far she's come. And it was in Irish green garb with an Irish jig that she danced into and it looks silly, very forgettable. I forgot that happened. I'm, Cause I mean, look how far she's come since then. Main eventing WrestleMania. Um, look what she just did at NXT No Mercy the other night too. She's come way beyond that, but uh, she did not like it. She still doesn't look back finally on it. But the way how she looked at it was she evolved from it. And like so, so many other people in pro wrestling have evolved from silly gimmicks. I guess most notably you want to say in WWE. You can get past those hurdles and become just a superstar. And she became a superstar with the hard work put into it and adjusting things on the fly, I guess. I think she's okay now. Definitely think she's okay. Another recent example of this, I guess, is Tiffany Stratton because she started off as the rich girl, daddy's girl gimmick and she basically dropped that for more of an entitled kind of persona, but I mean, she's just a natural at this thing. I mean, you saw the match she put on with Becky Lynch at No Mercy. Unbelievable. And if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out on Peacock. I mean, hey, Peacock, if you want to give me a little bit of a sponsorship here, I mean, give some free advertisements here, <laughs> but... um. Yeah, that was that was pretty wild what she did. And sky's the limit for her because she's a superstar and she's grown so quickly in two years. For someone who's st who started off with no wrestling experience, now headlining shows in multi thousand seat arenas. I mean, she's gonna be headlining at WrestleMania sooner than later. And she's only twenty four years old. She'll be around. Cardi B in the recent Hot Ones interview said that she tried using Triple H's name to rhyme in her song Hot Shit. But she used Jimmy Superfly Snuka instead, just because Triple H, I mean, it's really a hard one to rhyme with. Let's just say Beach, H, Nach, Mach, Quach, Rache, Leish, but that's kind of lame. H, I mean, Triple H, I mean, you can go Sipple H, Ripple H, Principal H, Gripple H, Sipple H, I just think I just said that. Uh, simple quach, but that's that would be uh, that would be some of the silliest sampling I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Another little bit of a wacky thing was Kayla Braxton uh, recalling her good old infamous acting moment on SmackDown a couple years back when scaffolding fell on Roman Reigns and she had to try to sell it. Uh, thankfully, she says that she's undergone some acting training since then because oof, that laugh, or excuse me, that. Cr that scream was, was a, that was a scream, that was a scream, all right, yeah, that was not great, <laughs> but kudos to her for getting acting chops, because I, I mean, I can't act, so, <laughs> I think you've seen this meme floating around quite a bit lately, I think this would probably be accurate for some people, no, 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 if you have not seen the clip of MJF, Cole, and Paul White sitting together on a Long Island, in a Long Island ocean on a boat drinking beer together, it is the absolute funniest, maybe, maybe the funniest thing they've done so far yet, or one of them in those vignettes. I mean, I can't get over how uh, much of a laugh I got from that, and being from Long Island too, having these three doing this. Oh my god, uh, more please. And John Moxley on commentary, uh, to wrap up with this, there's some best of clips floating around there where he just let loose. And he was on like three different matches at, at Wrestle Dream for commentary. And if this is a way how to use him while he recovers from his concussion, which was scary as hell, more of it, please. <laughs> more of this too, because he was, he provides so much life into the commentary. He felt fresh, younger voice in there. He was vibing with the commentators great. And just the one-liners he was dropping in there. He would get up, he would shout F-bombs. That was probably the funniest thing of the night. Yeah, he's he's gold. He's absolute gold. And if he ever wanted to, he probably has a commentary spot waiting for him the day he ever wraps up wrestling. So I think that's going to wrap up this first episode here. Um, hit that subscribe button. See where you can follow me at and check out everything else I'm doing. And, uh... Yeah, we'll be back soon with another episode, and, uh, yeah.